Now, I'm afraid that this is quite a boring topic for me to make a video about, but it is really important, especially if you're in year 13 and you're doing A-level sciences and obviously A-level physics in particular. Now, recently, with uh, the fact that schools have been shut for the last couple of years, there have been some announcements about the 2022 exams and how this affects the practical work that you might or might not be doing. Now, there's been a statement released by the Department for Education and Ofqual, and basically it says that the DfE have decided as a matter of policy to permit the assessment of the Common Practical Assessment Criteria, the CPAC, um, in A-level Biology, Chemistry, Physics and Geology across the minimum number of practical activities required for students to demonstrate their competence. So, what does this actually mean? Well, basically, when you've finished your A-levels, you get the grade, and that's going to be going from E up to an A star, fingers crossed. Um, but you also get this practical endorsement. And if you've shown that you're competent across various areas of the practical science, you get a pass for that as well. Now, the other year, I think about 98% of students passed this. And those who didn't quite achieve the pass, it was often due to them perhaps uh, missing school due to illness or something like that. Um, to be honest, I think if you're going to get an A star in physics, then the assumption is that you know how to do some simple experiments. Now, going forward into your real exams, you still need to know about all of the practicals that are mentioned in the course specification. Even if you've not actually done that practical yourself, you need to understand the kind of physics that it's trying to demonstrate. You need to think about the equipment that could be used and how the experiments could be made more precise, more accurate, and so on. So you still need to know about all of the practicals. The difference is, for 2022, for current year 13 students, you don't have to do all of the practicals outlined by the exam board. So in England, this might be, I think, about 12 things for um, AQA. I think there might be 14 for Edexcel. There's a certain number for OCR. But you don't need to do all of them as long as you've shown that you have got all of the competencies and you've demonstrated that at least once. So what are they? Well, I've got this other document here. Um, and basically, this is what the CPAC is. So the first one, CPAC 1, is about following written procedures. So basically, if your teacher has given you a set of instructions, you followed they, you followed those, you've got a good result, then that means you've shown competence for CPAC 1. Now, in a normal year, pretty much every practical you do shows or allows you the opportunity to show that you've achieved this competence. But this year, as long as you've done that once, that's good enough. CPAC 2 uh, looks at um, investigative approaches and methods when using instruments and equipment, and it's broken it down into four subsections. Um, so can you correctly use the apparatus? Can you do things in a logical, methodical sequence? Can you identify and control significant uh, quantities? So have you made sure that your control variables are kept the same throughout? And also, perhaps you've also selected appropriate equipment. So if you're measuring the diameter of a piece of wire, you're trying to do that perhaps using um, some kind of micrometer rather than just using a normal ruler, like the one that we have over here. So a lot of that is often common sense, and you will hopefully achieve that within a couple of practicals. Have you done this safely? This is CPAC number three. And this is about safely using a range of equipment and materials. And to be honest, I would say that in, in A-level physics, the equipment is all relatively safe. It might be that you do get to use some radioactive sources, but again, in a controlled manner, you can minimise any risks. Can you make and record observations, CPAC 4? Can you take your results and put them into a results table? Have you got repeated readings? And then have you actually analysed that data afterwards? And finally, the fifth one, often covered in year 13 rather than year 12, is about researching, referencing and reporting. And often there might be a practical where you've got to go away, you can research a method, which you then do in class. Now, the thing is, all of these things here are useful skills that you still need to know about because you might be assessed on these in your exams. So there might be some data that you've got to analyse, there might be a method that you've got to describe, and hopefully, your teachers want you to do this as well, but hopefully you will get as much hands-on experience with practical equipment as possible between now and your final exams. And that's going to make you a better physicist and really able to actually understand that. But ultimately, 
the common practical assessment criteria. It's just kind of like a boring document and it's the kind of thing that routinely students would just achieve. But it's only because there's been such a lack of practical work due to the bubbles, due to schools closing, due to the normal restrictions due to COVID, that they've actually brought in this change. Ultimately, I, I suspect that probably 98% of students will again get a pass this year and that. And also, when you're thinking about the grades that you need for university, if you've got an A star, even if you didn't have the CPAC passed, then you're probably going to get into your course of choice. So it's all really about the grades, and this is just a nice thing to have on that certificate as well. So yeah, hopefully that's been useful. If you want to find some more videos where I explain and show you some of the equipment for some of the practicals that you need, head over to alevelphysicsonline.com uh, and you can find loads of stuff there to help support you over the next year or so. Also, you can follow me on TikTok where I'm trying to do a video every day between now and the exams. So if you head over to TikTok and just look for Physics Online, you'll find loads and loads of stuff there, including many, many worked examples. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.